Said you guys, you finished up your test, just worry about that. You don't need to do um, for this. So, all right guys, if we want to find the inverse cosine of one, what we need to do is we need to remember a couple things. Um, first of all, we need to figure out where is our coordinate, you know, if we're going to be looking at inverse cosine of one, where could that be in our unit circle? Well, if I was going to kind of draw a unit circle, I obviously have these three important points that we always first looked at, right? If this one is radical three over two, comma, one half. We have radical two over two, comma, radical two over two. Then we have one half, radical, comma, radical three over two, right? That's like kind of your first quadrant. There's also two other points that you need to remember. Remember the radius of our unit circle is at one comma zero. And then we have zero comma one, right? All right, you got that? Okay, so pretty much what I did was I just redrew up our unit circle. So what they're asking for is pretty much, you know, the inverse cosine of one, what is going to be our angle? So first thing I need to understand is where exactly is cosine going to equal one? And there's really only one angle that our cosine is going to equal one. If you guys look at it, um, obviously remember cosine deals with our x value of our coordinate on the unit circle. So therefore, if you notice, here's the only point where cosine is going to equal to one. Right? And we need to make sure that it falls within our domain. Remember the domain of cosine is between zero and pi. That was your, I'm sorry, not your domain, but your range of cosine was between zero and pi. So therefore, I have to make sure that my point lies within the restriction, which it does. So therefore, now I need to determine what is this angle at this point. So inverse cosine of one, what is the angle? Remember, here's your initial angle. If you go up to here, how far did you go? Yeah. Zero. So therefore, cosine, that's not a cosine, inverse cosine of one equals zero. And that's how I get the answer. Okay? Make sense?